Freedom in 1916, they actually played a central part in that. And um, along with volunteers from Manchester, from Scotland, from Coatbridge, Glasgow, Dundee, and from London. And a lot of them became part of what was known as, as the Kimmage Garrison. So they landed in Dublin in January of 1916. There was a garrison set up in the, um, in the Kimmage part of Dublin and up to 60 volunteers for the weeks leading up to the rising were involved in drilling, making arms, making bombs and up to 40 of those volunteers were actually Liverpool volunteers. When Patrick Pearce and James Connolly set up the general headquarters in the GPO in 1916, all of the Liverpool volunteers were based in and around the general headquarters in both in the GPO and what was known as Sackville Street. The Liverpool Irish actually played a very important part within the GHQ and the GPO that week. It was a Liverpool Irish volunteer that actually hosted the Irish uh, tricolour over the GPO in 1916. It was a Liverpool Irish volunteer that actually done that. Within the GPO that week, there was Irish accents, there were Scouse accents, there were Scottish accents. So really, when anyone sort of starts to talk to us about being plastic paddies, they really do need to get a grip of themselves and look at the central role that Liverpool Irish have actually played in the formation of the Irish state and who then fought for Irish freedom then afterwards. So what we've done this afternoon, we've begun to remember those volunteers for the central part that they played in 1916 and for the part that they did go on to play within the Irish War of Independence and for the part that they did go on to play in fighting fascism in Spain in the 1930s. And we need to remember as well their involvement in fighting for Irish freedom from 1969 onwards. Uh, and of course next year it is a very important year for us because next year forms the 100th anniversary or is the 100th anniversary of the 1916 rising. And it's important that the Liverpool Irish community, you know, take part in both the national and international events that will surround that. So ourselves in Carriginet Aaron and Anne within the flute band, we've already begun working with that. We're part of an organisation called the Easter 1916 the Commemoration Committee that has been based within St Michael's Irish Centre for the last eight months. And we're already starting to work on big projects for next year that will remember the Liverpool Irish involvement in the Easter 1916 rising. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm going to invite up Steve, first of all, who is going to read the proclamation. Proclamation of Public Nairn, the Provisional Government of the Irish Republic. To the people of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood, through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland, and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. 
The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished that right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation amongst the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and every Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all their men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted would administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity, or raping. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kent, James Connolly, and Joseph Plunkett.